what is going on guys welcome back to the channel as we continue on with our year by year classic rock album review and today we are talking 1974 and if you haven't checked out 70 to 73 by all means go to my profile go to my playlist i've got it laid out there you can catch up to the series because we are finally getting into the era of the 70s that is my peak 70s 74 to 77 78 that's my ideal 70s time. So I am very excited to get talking about this. And the hardest part with doing these few years coming up is trying to narrow down albums. The earlier years, I had, I, I had a very small selection of full albums I heard. And if you've watched my 1972 one, I couldn't even give you full albums. I had to give you songs. But now we're hitting a point where I had to start narrowing albums down. And I'm going to give two honorable mentions before we start this, because they're not ones I go throw on all the time, but I do like these albums, and that is Queen, Sheer Heart Attack, and Rush. Stone Cold Crazy is an amazing song, one of my favorite Queen songs of all time. Working Man by Rush, that opening riff, love it. I don't go back to that album, I visit their other albums more than I do this one, but I just want to honorable mention them and say that they are phenomenal. Coming in, number five is... Aerosmith get your wings and I'm a big Aerosmith guy to the point I even I even like 90s Aerosmith and the funny thing about Aerosmith to me is they have songs I love and then they have songs that I truly despise that I cannot stand they have full albums I can't stand and they have ones I love they they might be the most wishy-washy band for me as far as what I want to hear and what I don't want to hear the stuff I like I love the stuff I don't like I loathe but Get Your Wings is one that I love. I mean, it kicks off with Same Old Song and Dance, which is a top five Aerosmith song for me, regardless of eras of Aerosmith. You get Train Kept or Rolling. You get Seasons of Wither. There's a couple deeper tracks on here that don't get play because there's so many hits that get played off of this album and other albums. But it is a solid entry top to bottom. But I always find myself going back to Same Old Song and Dance and Train Kept or Rolling. Keep in mind, I've said this on a couple review series before, this isn't like a best to worst kind of ranking. I'm just saying my five favorite, ten favorite, however many I do of that year. There are some that I definitely do put above others, but for the most part, they made my favorites list, so I love them. Number four is going to be Bad Company and their debut album, Bad Company. Can't Get Enough, Bad Company, Moving On, Ready for Love. Tons of good hits. Paul Rogers already made this list once before with Free in 1970. And now he's making it with Bad Company. They got all the hits on here. The bigger songs. They have one or two albums after this that have a couple hit songs off of it. But this is the main one. And when you hear that piano. When you start side B of that album. And you hear that little piano progression. It just gets me every time. It's a great album all the way through. But I do find myself going back to the hits for this. Because I can't get enough of them no pun intended up next i'll talk hotter than hell by kiss if you followed this channel all the way through you know i'm a huge kiss fan did the entire review series for them every single album every single track hotter than hell is not one of my favorite albums by them simply off production but the songs there are great and they have many live staples that come off of this album but coming home is in my top five kiss songs of all time got to choose is amazing i'll just take it right to their self-titled debut, Kiss. I'll just get my Kiss out the way right now. The first album, the intro, you hear that strutter drum kicking it off, and that's where the obsession begins, baby. You have so many staples that were on Alive that blew them up on this studio album. Strutter, Nothing to Lose, Firehouse, Cold Gin, Deuce, Black Diamond, 100,000 Years. Um, yes, it doesn't hit as heavy in the studio. Yes, it's aged. Yes, I get it. Great album. I love it to death great cover. I'm so glad I have it on vinyl. I play it all the time just for simple nostalgia, and it really did just give some of the best live tracks ever. And last but not least, a band that made the list for last year, and they will keep making years to come. That is Second Helping by Leonard Skinner, and this is where you get Sweet Home Alabama. And if you haven't listened to this album and you only know that song, you're not a big Skinner guy, this is by far my least favorite song on the album, and I still like it. But with this, you got I Need You, don't Ask Me No Questions, which is my favorite on this album. Working for MCA, Ballad of Curtis Lowe, Swamp Music, Needle in the Spoon, Call Me the Breeze. I touched on it last episode, I'll say it again. When I listened to Leonard Skinner and those first four or five albums, I just put that on shuffle and go. I never skip a Leonard Skinner song. I played all the way through. 
this album would be no different. But guys, put it down below. Does my list match up with yours in any way? Which ones did I leave out? Which ones should I have thrown in? Which ones should I get rid of? Put it all down in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We have 1975 coming up, baby. And you know what that means. Two more Kiss albums. That's how it's going to go. You already know. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. You guys are the best. Peace.